Welcome to Mission Majima. Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about Majima Nikaya 9, the Samaditi Sutta. So Samaditi Sutta, the discourse on right view, is a discourse given by Sariputta to a number of monastics in which he defines right view, um, a correct understanding of the world. This is the first factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. And he starts off by defining this, appro- this uh, right, right view, right take on the world as defining what's wholesome and what's unwholesome hmm. by body, speech, and mind. The root of what's wholesome and the root of what's unwholesome. Um, and yeah, describing in that way, these roots being greed, anger, and delusion hmm. for the unwholesome and lack of greed, anger, and delusion for the wholesome. Then he goes, uh, and after giving that, his disciples, these people listening to him, are all very excited. And they say, that's wonderful, that's marvelous. Uh, could you describe another way of defining right view? And he defines what are called the four nutriments, the four ahara, which we'll go into later, um, defining the cause of these nutriments, their cessation and the path leading to the cessation, uh, and the full understanding of these nutriments or of what's wholesome and unwholesome leads to awakening in different ways. The uh, sorry, Putta then goes on to define four noble truths, uh, after which he describes uh, dependent origination, each factor of dependent origination, their cause, the cessation, and the path leading to the cessation, uh, all the way back to the first mm-hmm. cause of ignorance, saying what is ignorance caused by? It's caused by taints, um, the asavas, and then that asavas are in turn caused by ignorance. And so what's interesting, what he's doing is showing the relationship between the Four Noble Truths framework, defining a psychologically mm-hmm. Uh, important pertinent factor its cause its cessation and the path leading to a cessation with dependent origination paticca samuppada hmm. which is just a fascinating um, mingling and constellation um, showing the relationship of these two centrally important hmm. perhaps arguably the most centrally important doctrinal uh, lists or views on in the canon so hmm. that's great and Ajahn, what do you feel is uh, kind of what strikes you in the sutta? What's most interesting? I think, um, you know, you're pointing to the merging of the Four Noble Truths in some ways is the most kind of clear, simple framework the Buddha gives us, and merging that with the Twelve Links is, is fascinating. That's a great point. The Twelve Links are complex, and uh, Longport Shah acknowledged this and said when people were intimidated by dependent origination, he said, look, it's like you're falling out of a tree and counting every branch on the way down. Sometimes it's enough just to know when you fall out of the tree, it hurts. When you start with ignorance, you end up suffering. And it, it really is pretty amazing to delve into the 12 links. Um, so to give an unbelievably uh, short summary, that's not going to do them justice. Uh, ignorance of the Four Noble Truths um, leads to sankara, volitional formations, this going out into the world um, looking for satiation of some kind, at least that's one way of it manifests. Um, this leads to consciousness, uh, to name and form, uh, mentality, materiality, kind of the mind and body coming into constellation with that drive. Um, so say we're averse, maybe the mind throws up memories of how someone did something in the past that justifies our aversion. Um, this leads to uh, the six sense bases and contact, so sort of what we perceive and focus on in the world. Um, this can be looked at in a day-to-day, moment-to-moment system, at least, or way of looking at it. And this leads to Vedana, feeling, pleasant, painful, neutral. And this link is really key between Vedana and craving and how pleasant feeling, when it's touched with ignorance, leads to us buying into something and becoming drunk on it. And that leap into um, ignorant uh, craving is really a large step towards suffering. This uh, step of craving is, you know, where a lot of the chain can be broken, but it crescendos in the 12 links uh, from craving to becoming to, or sorry, craving to clinging to becoming to birth and then to death and suffering. So the end of the pattern. And traditionally that's modeled in a three lifetime model. This sort of encompasses multiple lifetimes and how beings move through samsara. 
but it really can be applied to each present moment. So it's a fascinating and profound system and far too much to get into now. And uh, what do you find worth highlighting in this sutta, Ajahn? Yeah, no, I appreciate that you defined or looking into the 12 aspects of dependent origination. And what I find really interesting is that the Buddha defines these here and that he defines these other um, aspects of psychological import and import in the way that we cause ourselves to suffer. Um, specifically, I've always found this, our teachers, Lumpur Pasano, Ajahn Chah, really pointing to the centrality of virtue and right view. And mm. what is right view? What is right view? That's how this, this uh, discourse begins. And Sariputta's capacity to define it so robustly, I think is quite useful mm. because it gives different people different avenues. Like all of us have different interests in what you find, like someone might find dependent origination or one aspect of dependent origination, particularly um, salient and interesting. And then someone else might find a different aspect. Mm. Um, and we can take this avenue. If we fully understand any of these links, their cause, their cessation and the path leading to the cessation, it leads to attainment in different ways. I find personally this description, the first description of right view, a correct understanding of the world to be what's wholesome, really useful because it's what we're doing by body, speech, and mind mm. and how we cannot do that. And that that's yeah, just not killing. That's the first aspect of these 10 kusala kamapata, the paths to uh, wholesome action, um, just not killing and understanding the truth of that, um, how that can lead to uh, yeah, awakening. Hmm. The four uh, ahara, the four types of nutriment, the first being uh, understanding uh, just gross material food, apples, oranges, bananas, and cakes. And the second being contact and intention, mental intention, and consciousness. Hmm. So different ways that the body and mind feed hmm. and understanding those causes as they relate to the mind. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's quite fascinating. So, Ajahn, how do you use this sutta? How do you find it uh, practical in your daily life? I mean, you point to a really interesting progression from the simple, just the two categories of kusala and akusala, wholesome and unwholesome, skillful and unskillful, all the way to the complexity of the 12 links. But Venerable Sariputta kind of applying that simple framework of the Four Noble Truths to each of those 12 links. I mean, there are 12 links, but that framework of looking at something's cause, its cessation, um, you know, and the path to that cessation it's such a, it's a very similar motion of the mind in each case. So it actually is very, it simplifies things in a lot of ways and gives you a very practical way of basically any of those mind moments that you catch and apply the Four Noble Truths to, Venerable Sariputta is saying the whole chain dissolves. And that's so helpful because like if you notice you're jumping from feeling into craving, the pleasant feeling is leading to this sense of becoming drunk on something and you just notice that notice the cause, and then develop the Noble Eightfold Path, bring mindfulness to that moment, um, you know, restraint, right view, then it dissolves. And to know that any of those links that can be brought to bear on, um, you know, there's 12 links, but it's such a simple approach to each mind moment um, and sort of just a widening and calming of awareness that it's very practical, I find. Um, so, yeah, I really, I really appreciate this sutta. And what is there that's new in this discourse, Ajahn? Uh, well, a lot of the specific definitions, so it's the first time we meet those four types of nutriment. It's the first time the Four Noble Truths are defined so explicitly and with their traditional pericope or these stock phrases of dukkha, its cause, cessation, mm -hmm. and the path leading to its cessation that we also find in the Dhamma Chaka Sutta, the Buddha's actual first discourse to his first disciples. Um, it's the first time that we find uh, specific definitions for aging and death and birth and all the fun stuff the fun stuff dangerous yeah scary stuff um first time we meet six types of craving six types of feeling six types of mm. contact um, six types of consciousness based on the different sense door that is meeting um yeah that the mind is contacting the world and craving for the world from and what's the word of the week ajahn the word of the week is kusala, kusala, which means wholesome or skillful based on the word kusa, which is a type of grass. 
uh, which is very thin. And if you handle it well, you can make baskets out of it. You can make all sorts of things out of it. But if you're unskillful, unskilled in the way that you work the grass, the sides of it, which are like little razors, um, can actually cut you. Mm. So la is a root which means to cut. So one who cuts kusa grass skillfully is skillful. Mm. And that is then taken uh, by extension to the uh, ethically potent meaning of the word for wholesome. Mm. So that which is wholesome is that which will... Um, lead to wholesome results mm. and to uh, happiness. So, very important word. Well, keep that in mind for the week. And we'll see those of you joining us on Sunday in about a minute on Zoom. Otherwise, we'll see you for Manjimitakaya 10. All right. Ajahn. <laughs>